Hey everybody, welcome to Ask Dr. Testosterone, starring Dr. George Tuliados, brought to you by his book, Bodybuilding, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, just came out with a new and improved edition. You can get that at Amazon.com or on his website, gtool.com, G-T-O-U-L.com. See him every month in the pages of Muscular Development Magazine, and every Tuesday is Dr. T Tuesday at MuscularDevelopment.com. That's when we post these videos and a new article every week by the doctor. Now joining us from Athens, Greece, Dr. George Tuliados. How are you, doctor? Hi, Ron. It's been quarantine three, uh, week number three now. Um, and uh, things are going pretty well in Greece because uh, the victims are already about 70. The cases are about uh, 1,700. Uh -huh. And it's among the, the least uh, numbers in, uh, the lowest numbers in European Union. Hmm. I know uh -huh. that the crisis is now spreading to the east coast of uh, to the states and especially in New York. Oh, yeah. You have over 300,000 uh, cases and uh, dead people around 3,000. I'm, I'm not sure about 2,000. Yeah. So I think it's like 3,000 at this point. But they're saying by uh, this next week and the week after going to be the, the worst. We're going to have a lot of death. The peak That's... arrives here this week in Greece. Oh, OK. I think in Italy, just going downhill now. It just peaked last week and in Spain also because the, they're not dying so many that they mm -hmm. used to. Uh, the point is uh, they have to, to, to take off the restraint orders gradually because imagine if everybody comes out then, yeah. uh, it's, it's going to be like an explosion. explosion. Well, a, second, a second wave of infections and, and sickness exactly. and death. But I mean, you can't keep us inside forever. That's... I mean, what if we're indoors for two months, they let everyone out, and then a lot, then we have a whole new wave of cases? As long as the weather is bad, then you most likely stay indoors. Mm. But yesterday in UK and in Sweden, it was a good weather then. And even though, uh, I mean, in UK, it's, it's messed up the situation. And even though, even that, some, uh, some uh, citizens, some civilians from London uh, went out in the parks, you know, and tried to enjoy the weather. <coughs> Yeah. You can't keep people all, with, all, all the time in, indoors, you know, it's, you're becoming I mean, depressed and it's... Yeah. I mean, it as long as, why, why, like you said, you're not allowed outdoors that much in Greece, but I don't understand if you're, if you're keeping your distance from everybody, what's the problem? You can have a walk around your block, but make sure you keep a distance of six feet with the, with the, with the other, and uh, in case you go into uh, somewhere with a two-pack, then make sure you're wearing a mask. Mm, yeah okay now, i see you're uh are you growing a beard until this quarantine is over what's going on oh just for five days now because uh, today i had no appointments at the work you know mm. I, I, I don't know about the rest of the week but uh everybody starts dan solomon has a long beard. <laughs> i couldn't do it i shaved yesterday i was starting to get one i'm like nah, I, just, I don't i don't like it the way after a certain point anyway but you uh, keep a good shave i see the t-shirt is it looks really tight huh <laughs> yeah, this is a uh, no. None of the shirts are as tight. I think we're all losing a little bit of size these days, except for these maybe, people. Maybe that... we're getting leaner also because we lose also some fat. I don't know, yeah. but it's from the Arnold Classic. I have one of those also. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I'm seeing some gyms online. People are posting their home gyms. Some people have some awesome home gyms. I'm very jealous. <laughs> it's crazy. The you know, that... I missed the time before the COVID. I mean, uh, yeah. we we evaluate how. Uh, my, the, the significance of health and things that we take for granted like uh, being in socializing with people mm. uh, it's so important and it's, it's vital because we're social uh, I mean human beings are social are meant to be social yeah. not be isolated you know no, it's, it's going to be very very strange when we're all back together again as a you know groups of people and concerts and plays and sporting events and just going to the gym again is going to be wow. Yeah, we're going to talk about the pre and the post COVID, uh, <laughs> uh, like the Dorian, <laughs> the pre. No, it's like it's like people who lived through the Great Depression in the U.S. or every, World War II. You know, this is something everyone's going to remember. Everyone you say, remember that. Remember when we all had to stay indoors for two months, Actually, three months. This is a World War III, but yeah. in other in different circumstances. Yeah, you're right. It's viral warfare, and it's the enemy is a virus. It's not another invisible. I mean. United States spent so much in uh, in weapons of massive destruction, but they are ho helpless to an invisible uh, invisible uh, your threat, which is so tiny. 
Imagine that. If we'd spent <laughs> if we'd spent more money on uh, you know, stocking up on things like ventilators and these masks and so we'd be in a lot better shape right now, but eh, it is what it is. Well, doctor, okay, let's, let's get started. Yeah, let's get started. Let's get into some questions. And these came from uh, mostly the comment section under the YouTube videos. Guys, that is where you leave and your also questions. One mm -hmm. from the forum. Yes, yeah, we did yes. get one from uh, musculardevelopment.com, no bull forum. There's a thread we keep up there all the time, a sticky thread called Questions for Dr. T. So I encourage you guys all, if you haven't checked out the Noble Forum on musculardevelopment.com, head over there. we got some great discussions going on. Question number one. Hello, I'm a jumping athlete looking to gain the most possible relative strength without gaining too much weight. I've been running 200 milligrams test and 200 milligrams DECA due to having some joint issues. And that's been going fairly well. But last week, I decided to switch to 150 test and 350 Masteron due to the non-estrogenic effects of Masteron, thus less water retention. What's your opinion on the best cycle to use for an athlete looking to gain strength with minimal weight gain, preferably not orals due to liver toxicity? And other than DECA, is there any other steroid you would recommend that can help my joints? Perhaps one with less water retention. What do we got for this guy? So in order to gain strength, you need um, androgens like testosterone. Now, in order to minimize water retention, you can use testosterone suspension, which has a half-life of 24 days and gets rid of the system. Otherwise, if it's too painful for you and it's not easy to find, you can use propionate that is used every other day or at least every three days. Um, another fact is that strength is achieved by uh, androgens that... Um, uh, they are no, they're, they, they do not lead to water retention like the liver toxic M3, M3 enolone and halotestin fluoxymesterone. So you can have it all. You can have strength, no liver toxicity, and uh, plus you don't want also water retention. So uh, if I were you and I was, for instance, um, a track athlete or a power lifter or an Olympic weight lifter, I would use testosterone suspension along with halo testing or M3, creatine monohydrate. Now about joints, there's nothing that works so effectively as DECA because DECA stimulates aldosterone more than other uh, steroids. This is what's supposed to do. <clears throat> Besides, the water retention leads to joint relief and lubrication, you know, so yeah. you cannot separate this. It's, it's also aldosterone, it's also estrogen, so it's part of a whole process. Yeah. Uh, so, of course, yeah, creatine monohydrate plays a role. Now, masteron also is an androgen, and um, even though DHT has not significant uh, effect on muscle because it's deactivated by an, a certain enzyme, uh, masteron, uh, proviron, and testosterone are three, and also halotestin are the four androgens that we use within steroid cycles. Yeah. Also, yeah, trembling have... has a, a oh. very androgenic effect that gives you strength. Yeah. Uh, yes. And very little, very little water retention with trend too. Uh, <clears throat> with estrogens, no, no, it's yeah. not about estrogens. Now about prolactin, uh, I, this is another issue with it has to do with the static part in genicomastia and uh, erectile dysfunction. But frankly, trend is used until the last week. Yeah, uh, prior to the show, you know. Okay. Next question. I stopped my cycle on February twentieth, two thousand twenty. What? February 21st, 2020, we're, we're recording this on April 6th, by the way. Since then, I haven't used anything, not even testosterone. I'm now six weeks drug-free, haven't started a PCT either. My question was meant in such a way. I start after four to six weeks without anything with a TRT dose of testosterone and nanthate, 100 to 150 milligrams a week. Does this for four to six weeks and then blast with, so he's going to add on to that, Oh, he's going to blow. I'm sorry. So the, after that, he's going to do 600 milligrams test of nanthate, 600 milligrams boldenone, 400 milligrams masteron, and add some anivar for the last 30 days of this 16 week cycle. Is half a milligram arimidex every other day sufficient, or can I take 25 milligrams nolvidex every other day instead with that cycle? The ananthate, the boldenone, and the masteron, and the anivar. Whew. Well, the only reason to use our imidex every other day is for the half a gram of testosterone you're using. Mm. The rest of the compounds do not aromatize. Huh. 
So three milligrams of a Remidex, uh, I'm sorry, it's 0.5, so about 1.5, two milligrams of a Remidex per week is sufficient for the 500 milligrams of uh, testosterone. Now, Novotex wo works in a different way. So you occupy the estrogen receptor, but this doesn't mean that the rest of the estrogens <coughs> do not float, uh, unlike the aromatase inhibitors that cut off aromatase enzyme and there's zero production of estrogens. I would use uh, every other day the, uh, the low dose anastrozole instead of the serum of Novotex, which is actually 20 milligrams. Okay, cool. <clears throat> Next question. Why introduce boldenone into a cycle? Is it more potent to stick to testosterone? Boldenone being a test derivative? Thanks. So, yeah, if, if you had a choice, would you just use testosterone or would you use test and boldenone? Well, nothing replaces testosterone. Actually, replacement therapy is about testosterone. Uh, if you want to add something beneficial to testosterone, this is DECA because DECA is a pharmaceutical grade. Uh, Equipose is not. Equipose is also supposed to be made for, for cattle and veterinarian use. And also DECA is more anabolic than <coughs> Equipose. Maybe it's a little bit more estrogenic, but mind that estrogenic effect is beneficial for the muscle growth mm. for the off season and has also this joint lubrication to to the to the synovial uh, cavities. Also, DECA may assist you in low bone mineral density because it leads to calcium retention and absorption. All right. And uh, even though DECA is uh, old fashioned old school drug that Arnold used, everybody goes to Equipos and Boldenone from South America. I don't know, because it's more trendy. trendy. Yeah, well, it's got the picture of the horse on the bottle, so you want to be big like a horse, right? <laughs> a red Horses cup, are jacked. A red cow, yeah. <laughs> Clydesdales. You ever see a Clydesdale up close? Whew, they're massive. The things are like the size of a Ford F-350 pickup truck. Anyway, next question. Hello, Doc. I'm 43 years old from UK, so getting a doc to look after me is almost impossible. I'm currently on testosterone and nanthate, 250 milligrams every week, and I feel I've been on this for almost a year now. Oh, I feel great, he says. I've been on this for almost a year now without any sides. I've used many steroids 20 years ago, but just cruising now. Is 250 milligrams too much for a TRT dose, or should I take a lower dose? I do check my blood pressure and all is fine. I was experiencing low T symptoms before all of it, before I started this. So 250 milligrams a week. Good. Yes, roughly, roughly is the upper limit you can use if you're a big guy and uh, you used to be an IFB pro, for instance. I have uh, under my supervision a former Greek IFB pro who's using 250. Uh, I also, I was, uh, I was told that the, uh, that the former Mr. Olympia who visited Greece 10 years ago, he also used 250 mm. uh, pharmaceutical grade. And uh, it's, it's preferable to use it splitted, you know, 0.5 twice a week. Okay, uh, 250 is going to lead you to about 2,000 picograms of t testosterone in, in your blood, mm. which is almost double, but it's also up to the body mass index and your lifestyle. Now, listen, if somebody is uh, at an Olympia level, he uses uh, cruising, uh, no, I mean, no cruising, but a casual dose of 2.5 grams per week, then ah. 250 would be one tenth of it, you know. Right. So as long as your hematocrit and your estrogens are controlled, then you can use it, but you may experience then hair thinning or, you know, some perhaps some prostatic enlargement, enlargement and some urine, uh, urination issues. Mm -hmm. But this is also personalized. Um, before I left uh, Greece for the States, I had one shot of 250, you know, <laughs> as I was leaving for the airport. Yeah. Because I would be one week without uh, TRT. I didn't want to risk anything at the airport and get the, you know, even though I could prescribe them, just in case, you know. Uh, so... Yes, 250. I think you're using more than that. But uh, 250 is a reasonable dose to to have some gains, you know. Yeah, I think that's funny you said that because I bet every bodybuilder who who uses who either TRT or blasts if they travel uh you know with air, with the airlines involved, they do all their shots. You know, if I'm leaving on a Thursday morning to go to the Olympia of the Arnold, I'll do my shots Wednesday night 
because exactly. I'm not going to be I'm not going to be home till Sunday night or Monday morning or something like that. So, yeah, I don't want to lose all my gains. I don't want to. <laughs> but I think everybody does that. We all do that. Because if you travel, if you travel with needles and steroids, you're a moron. You're like, no. Please arrest me, please. Anyway, next question. What do you think about this? 150 milligrams of sustenon gives me a thousand nanograms of tests. So that must be his total test. 25 milligrams of DHEA, 25 milligrams of proviron, 25 milligrams pregnenolone, 250 IU HCG every other day. Is this too much for a TRT plus? So what's a TRT plus? I've never HRT, heard that. HRT is TRT. It's testosterone added with auxiliary androgens like okay. DHT, DHEA, um, also HCG that boosts uh, testosterone and sperm production. So this is what I actually do. Okay. Uh, but he does blast some growth hormone. So HRT is composed of the testosterone, the TRT, plus some other extra hormones. Okay. No it's more not. beneficial to replace a variety of hormones that just than one hormone according to um, um, a superb uh, age management doctor in, uh, in Belgium, Jay Hertog. Mm. Okay. He believes in that. I think age management is about this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... That looks like a lot of different things to take, but it sounds. Is is that a good a good mix? Everything he's using is that something you? Yeah, it's you would, low dose yeah? and it's about replacement uh, therapy. Yes. All right. So, sir, you're doing great. Next question. You've answered this many times before. What's the safest way to take Clen? For how many weeks and in what doses should someone start low in pyramid? The problem with Clen is that it gets accustomed and the receptors become saturated pretty easy. Now, in order to avoid this, we have to consider the half-life of clenbuterol hydrochloride, which is about 36 to 48 hours. Therefore, it means that it needs about two days and nights to get rid of the system. So we use it Monday and Tuesday, and then we cut it off on Wednesday and Thursday. And again, on Friday and Saturday, the receptors would be uh, open up in order to, to use it again. Otherwise, if we use it straight in a row, then... The next week, we're going to need a higher dose. Now, higher dose maybe gives you more results, but also side effects. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and some people uh, don't want to cut clenbuterol, but as they increase the dose and the face side effects, then um, they also need to add some other drug for asthma and respir respiratory uh, issues, upper respiratory issues, which is called uh, ketotifen. Hmm. And uh, yes, it's about enhancing the effects of clenbuterol when you have the saturation effect of the receptors. Hmm. So okay. the, the best way is to use it on and off. Uh, okay. uh, at the off days, you may use a mecastack, but do not combine ECA or caffeine or tyrox. Uh, I'm sorry, ECA and caffeine hmm. along the days of, of clenbuterol. You may stack, although clenbuterol with T3, which is a very potent stack, uh, works perfectly where well. it's very synergistic and actually this is the best combination for fat burning mm. ephedrine is capable of giving you some intensity mm. okay and not 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 energy and not um, strength but give you intensity and some focus mental focus no tropic it's mm. also fat burning but uh clenbuterol t3 works perfectly well for the beta oxidation yeah so in order to have it a personal based in your squad, it's better to use like a stack than like clenbuterol that works prolonged throughout through the whole day, you know. But yeah. like a stack works perfectly well before a heavy squad and then it has a half life of six hours, you know, so it's get in and out faster. Yeah. Now, I remember, you know, in the 90s, we didn't have workout, pre workouts didn't exist. There well, were no we pre workouts. Had, we had math one, remember? Hydroxyl, Xenadrine. Did... I used to use, yeah, Xenadrine and different ECA stacks. I would take those uh, on the way to the gym, and that was my pre-workout, and I got crazy intensity, but then I usually had a lot of trouble falling asleep at night. So yes. it's kind of a, one of those double-edged sword things. Okay, ah, another, another weight lift. Here's a good one. I'm a 48-year-old Olympic weightlifter, passionate about my sport and my health with diet and lifestyle well-tuned. What kind of cycle would you suggest if my main concern is is to not shut down my HPTA. How many cycles a year to reach this goal of using gear and still being able to not depend on TRT after the cycles? Grateful for what you're doing. 
uh, you cannot expect zero HPDA suppression because all antigens do so, but the list uh, that suppress are the DHT derivatives and the low androgenics. So oxandrolone, uh, stenozolol, and methanolol, in other words, primo winstrol and anavar. Yeah. For two reasons, because they are low androgenic, and the more androgenic it binds tightly with the androgenic receptors in the brain and shuts off. And also there is zero what uh, there is zero estrogen production as DHT derivatives. And as we know, estrogens suppress HPDA. Mm. But it's also time dependent and dose dependent. So it's different to use 20 milligrams of anabar for one month. And it's different to use 20 milligrams of anabar for two months, mm. you know. Yeah. Um, gradually, this is got no. Another thing is, do you ever follow PCT after your your cycle? Because if you don't, then you're gonna face someday uh, the 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 hypogonadism much sooner if you don't. Mm -hmm. You know, even yeah. though myself I was following PCTs since I first competed. You know, in 2000. But uh, I remember that after 10 years. I had about a testosterone level in my mid thirties, about 350, 400, which is pretty low for me. Yeah. So it's inevitable. And the more you take uh, care of yourself, then the later you're going to face hypergonadism. But I don't think it's uh, inevitable. Yeah. Yeah. I was watching, I was looking at YouTube videos and there was a young guy. He looked like he was about 24, 25 years old and he was making a video about his TRT protocol because he'd already blasted so many cycles that he shut down his own production, which at 24, 25 years old, to me, that's sad. That's way too young to, to have to depend on testosterone, you know, injections, but oh well, to each his own, right? They believe they're gonna be, come, I have to be pros, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? It's great to be an IP, I, I, we all wanna be, I, I would have, I'd still love to be an IPB pro, so I could change you know, my, uh, my Facebook name. But uh, you know what it takes around to be. It's like um, then you you become a drug a drug addict for life. Yeah, Think yeah. about it. Yeah. I mean, I'm, on, this I'm, is on your test, I'm already on testosterone for life. I can't quit. If I quit well, now, I turn. I'm talking about stacking. That stacking oh. affects the health. You know, right, right. And it's right. not an easy sport. You know, it doesn't mean that you're gonna take the whole drugs of the world. You're gonna become Ronnie Coleman. <laughs> no, I mean. A lot of people took as many as many drugs as Ronnie or more, and they're not Ronnie Coleman. They never looked like that. Only Ronnie looked like that. Okay. Ah, here's a good one, doctor. Can you please ask Dr. T to explain more about beta blockers in training? My doctor put me on them for anxiety. I was on diazepam for years. Is diazepam, is that Valium? Yes. Okay. So they stopped that and put me on beta blockers. I've always trained the same. Basics mainly. Keep journal and always try to get more weight. Or more reps. So, do beta blockers have any bad effect on your training? Yeah, we said in the brain, it leads to hypogonadism, you know, and low libido. Mm. Yes, I think also Connor mentioned that. And beta blockers can make you uh, slow, you know, and uh, um, they also suppress the submaximal intensity and uh, the, I'm sorry, the okay. submaximal intensity and uh, uh, maximal heart rate, you know, but um, it's not a good idea to to uh, to experience the same performance in the gym while taking beta blockers. Hmm. What could happen? What will happen? I mean, it sucks yeah. to your your your, your intestines going downhill. Oh, oh, oh! I thought you could have a bad reaction if you try to st still be intense in the gym. No, yeah. you could you couldn't bench the same. You gotta have the, hmm. the 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 usual heart rate, you know. So it's like having a break. Now, I've heard that in the Olympics, uh, certain sports like where they're shooting a gun Absolutely. or arrow, they need that. Yes, they, they need slow that. down their heart rate. Yeah. Slow down their heart rate. And this, as a, uh, as a, re, uh, as a result of this, uh, respiration goes down. And when you have lower breathing, then you're more steady to shoot. This is what snipers also use. Mm. You need to be a cone blood, you know, perfectly like calm. But you don't want that in a squat rack. No, no, no. No, not at all. The you need the opposite. So it's it's the is the opposite than beta stimulants, which is clamural, you know? Mm, that's right. Yeah. Imagine taking them both and seeing which one haven't let them fight it out inside your body. 
Who wins? Mm-hmm. I said, imagine yeah. taking, like taking uppers and downers to see which one wins. I know. Don't don't try that, kids. That was just a joke. Next one. Uh, we've talked about this before. Before resetting your receptors, and someone wants to know what does that mean to reset your receptors. I think it means to, as they get accustomed and saturated, then to open up. Hmm. So um, being on gear for a long time uh, means that your receptor, your androgen receptor saturation therapy, theory exists because you don't suck up and you don't utilize anymore your drugs. It's like when King Kamali said that you have a, bo- a glass of bottle filled with gear and then you still put it on, you just spill it. Mm. It's wasteless. It's, you know, <clears throat> it's, um, it's not working. doesn't mean that you're going you're gonna to be effective if you use four grams of testosterone. Personally, my, my blast, my highest blast was two grams. It doesn't mean that at two grams I had double strength than I had with one gram. Side yeah. effects, though, they were existing, you know? Right. So, <laughs> I mean, how long do you need to, you know, we've, we've, in the old days, we used to say if you're, if you're on for 12 weeks, you should be off for 12 weeks. Uh, yes, this is the bro science for HPTA recovery. Yeah, but what about uh, recept- what about receptors though? Does it do you get to a point where maybe like someone like myself, I've been using steroids on and off for twenty over twenty years now. Could I? Are my receptors gone? Are they never going to be able to reset? I heard once that glutathione is supposed to do this. Mm, okay. So when you are off and you're using glutathione, which is responsible for the liver detoxification, you know, yeah, it's supposed to. But this is a broad science, and it's not something <coughs> proved. With papers. Okay, cool. But listen, listen about when we use TRT, the antigen reception becomes saturated with testosterone. Mm. And eventually, after a couple of years, sex drive is not the same as we started. Mm. This is when we have to introduce HGG mm. in order to give a kick in the sex drive and also in the sperm production, you know, <clears throat> and also some uh, proviron in order to boost some free testosterone. It's a fact that. When the organism gets used to the to this substance, then it doesn't work the same way as you started when you had complete deficiency of this. Right. Hmm. Okay. Cool. Next one, Doctor. Would a prolactin level of twenty six point six, testosterone six fifty, free test ten point eight, for a natural fifty nine year old man be problematic for sex drive? If SH and LH also high on recent blood work, 23.5 and 11. Uh, yeah. So I, I asked him to clarify and he didn't answer me in time because I wanted to know, do you have a good sex drive now? Because, you know, I, I don't know if he has a, a poor sex drive and he's wondering if this is the reason. So let's let's assume that's the question, that his sex drive might be going uh, down. And he's to wondering. Labs, uh, prolactin is high. It's supposed to be just below 15 or the least. Or the most, I'm sorry, 20. So he has 26. Yeah. Then uh, his total testosterone is just Six. above between. It's about 600, so it's about 60%. Yep. Yeah. Uh, now your free testosterone is about 10 or 12, how much? 10. And I guess this is uh, just above the mid range. Mm. So actually, it's not supreme, the, the lab work, you know, the, the, the panel. And now about. He has high LH and FSH. Yeah, well, yeah, they're high. FSH and LH also high. Twenty-three and a half. High, yeah. I suspect any serum use, you know, that mm. clomiphene. Otherwise, LH and FSH are elevated under primary hypogonadism that does not exist now. I don't know if this, uh, if it, if this uh, HPTA panel is the result of some PCT with some serum use. Well, he says he's natural, so I'm going to assume he doesn't use serums, he doesn't use anything, just, you know, uh, create regular supplements. I think he can use some DHT in order to boost his free testosterone, and also he can use some cabergolin in order to lower his prolactin to um, experience a better, a better, you know, uh, organs. And also, I, I don't know about the estrogens that also play a fundamental role. If they are super high, they can lower... Or if they're super low, also they can lower your libido. So you said DHT. Did you mean to say DHEA that you should be using? No. What about DHT? Uh, I said DHT. Yes. You know, the oh. DHT will su- suppress HHBG and elevate more free testosterone. Oh, because 
DHT is you don't there's there's no drug DHT called DHT. Proviron and Masteron. Oh, it's Proviron and Masteron, the DHT derivatives. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, Final yeah. question, doctor. What are your thoughts on taking MK six seven seven while taking human growth hormone for maximizing performance and body composition? Since we know that taking exogenous HGH shuts off your own production of growth hormone, why not take a secretagogue to keep your growth hormone levels up? Good yes, idea. It's a good, good idea. idea. It's a good oh. idea. Actually, you can use it during the weekends. So Monday to Friday, use the GHG, and then during the weekends, you may add your uh, GHRH booster, which is MK677, Sermorlin, GHRP6, or GHRP2. Uh, but if you can't afford using testosterone straight, yes, use it. Hey, I'm sorry, testosterone, excuse me, the growth hormone straight. Now, this sounds a little bit of economy because uh, Monday to Friday you use the A's and then you cut it off and you use the uh, secretagogues. Uh, and also, um, I don't believe they're so promising after, after a certain age to use them. Maybe for some recovery purposes, you know, but not for growing reasons, you know, or uh, cutting off your fat. It's just about hmm. recovery. Just a slight, perhaps, portion of GHG is released. Okay. Gotcha. That's why they're, they are much cheaper and less effective. Okay, cool. Well, doctor, that's all our questions on this, what, third, fourth week of quarantine? I don't even, I'm, I don't even know what day it is anymore. It's, it's Monday, We're approaching right? number four now. And it's, <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, it's chest day. That's all you guys need to remember. T Monday is chest day. But this comes out on Tuesday. What's Tuesday? Everybody's got, is going back skinny at the gym, man. Eh? Everybody's hiding with the shirts, the long shirts, and. Uh, well, you know what though? I think if people are smart, they're gonna they're gonna get lean. They're gonna eat clean and do more cardio, and then when you go back to the gym, you can pack on muscle, and it's gonna look so much better because you're lean. You know what I mean? I, I'm not gonna wear a vest from the first time, and <laughs> I, I, I need to shave also. You know. No tank tops. No tank tops, man. <laughs> I always start off in a, I have a, I never wear just a tank top. It's always a t tank top, what you call a vest, and then a t-shirt over it. I wait till I get a pump. Then I take off you the t-shirt. Uh, the best advice that um, Joe Weider gave to Michael Hearn was never reveal your body when you're not 100% on. So just wear a vest when you're ripped. Don't expose your weaknesses to, uh, to others. Wow. And that's why Michael Hearn decided to stay at 5% body fat for his whole life. Yeah, he always looks good, Mike. Stays in great shape. Anyway, doctor, uh, I hope uh, every time I talk to you, I hope maybe next week things are going to be better and we can go back to the gym. But we'll the see. current team is, a, is, a, is postponed for 27th of April. Yeah. Which so one is? Weeks. Huh? Oh, for, for you guys to be back out? They're, they're telling you April 27th? Yes. Yeah, we don't have a date. We don't have a date. We got to see. We still don't know what's going on here. But, you know. That's kind of the worst thing is we don't know. Could this be another two weeks? Could this be another six weeks? Nobody By knows. The, way, um, the Arnold Classic winner, um, William Bonnack, is training in Africa, now in Ghana. Yeah, I don't think he can leave. He it's, sucks it's hope, uh, but also has very few uh, cases, you know. Mm. It's, re a... it's very rarely spread in Africa, maybe because of the heat, I don't know. Yeah. And he, he remains there, and I guess he's the only one who trains seriously now. <laughs> And he's, that's his gym. He opened that gym up, uh, I think, last year. So it looks, all the pictures, all the videos and stuff, it's got great equipment, you know. So he's in a good spot. I'm sure he misses his family back in uh, the Netherlands, but he's he's doing, He's looks like he's in a good spot for uh, training and eating and all that. He's, he's not losing any of his gains. Not safe for you. All right, doctor. Thank you so much. Guys, remember, if you have questions, please leave them in the comments here below. We record this show every Monday. And the following week is that's when we get to the questions that we get up all week. So please post your comments here or on musculadevelopment.com on the Noble Forum. We have a thread called Questions for Dr. T. And remember, every Tuesday, a new article comes up on musculadevelopment.com from Dr. Tuliados. And every month, Muscular Development Magazine, you can read his column. Doctor, thank you so much. Uh, I expect to see a full beard next week. Keep it going. Keep it going. I want, to see what you, I want to see what you look like with a beard, so don't shave. <laughs> All right, stay safe, like doctor. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You look like Arnold when he's got the beard. Cool, man. All right, thanks, doctor. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Ask Dr. Testosterone. We'll see you next time.